the sound tracker and Bluetooth audio. I've got something of an iffy relationship with Bluetooth because a lot of the devices that I've heard just haven't really been stellar. You know, I mean, they seem purpose-built to get the job done. I mean, if you want some quick music, you set up your phone and a crappy little speaker like this one, and, well, there you go. I mean, easy, but not great sound. So, as much of a stickler as I am for sound quality, I really can't deny that Bluetooth is, at the very least, convenient as hell. And I've gotten to thinking about it, and maybe some of the devices that I've heard might just be held back by the particular amplifier and speaker combo that they're tethered to. I mean, maybe I'll have better luck with this if I bring Bluetooth into my hi-fi system. Well, today I'm going to find out. Bluetooth itself is a wireless short-range transmission standard for data, essentially a wireless connection with a more personal touch. Two devices equipped with Bluetooth have to be in a close enough proximity, and when they're paired together, you can transmit data between them in what's called a point-to-point -point protocol. This applies to a lot of technologies today, wireless controllers, uh, handheld devices, sending files from one device to another, or, in this particular case, using a phone or a tablet to send sound data into a speaker system. Fun fact I didn't expect to find, the Bluetooth name and logo have Scandinavian origins. King Harald Bluetooth brought various Danish tribes together under a single kingdom, and apparently the creator of the device thought it was a fitting name to imply that Bluetooth pretty much unites connection protocols. One tooth to blue them all. So, I read in these same articles that it was initially supposed to be a stand-in name, but as development went on it just kind of stuck. <laughs> But I can't help but wonder what other names that they would have chosen for the device to mean the same thing. I mean, if they just decided to go with something else, like, what would that be? So here's the box holding the Cyan Tusk technology, and here's what lies within. We have cables, which I'm very glad to see, a power adapter over here with a barrel plug on the end, and this one is kind of a surprise to me given the ubiquity of USB-powered devices these days. Although, speaking of USB, there is also a USB with a barrel plug on it, so this must be about a, a 5 volt device, I guess. There's also a stereo Y cable, which converts RCA leads into 3.5 millimeter, like so. A presumably underutilized user manual, and let's just unfold this for a second, see how robust. Alright, so it's mostly pictographical in any sense, and uh, being pictographical is probably just designed to get you to start up and go as, about as quickly as possible. So, overall decent to have. I generally tend to prefer manuals that are a little bit more robust in their knowledge and use of a device, but, I mean, for something like this, I guess it'll be fine. And, of course, we have the Cerulean Fang adapter. Now, this is a pretty, uh, well, pretty light device, admittedly. It's very plastic in feel, uh, it has a very nice look, aesthetically speaking, at least in my opinion, but, um, it's pretty simple overall. The front of the device has a very nice etched company logo, and the top has a button for pairing devices. That's about it for here until we get to the back. On the back of the device, we have three very simple connections. The barrel plug for power on the right, RCA inputs in the center, and on the left, something I'm very pleased to see, an auxiliary input jack. This is in case you want to plug something in the old-fashioned way with a 3.5mm jack. At least that's what past me thought. Present me realizes exactly why you should always read the manual. So. When I initially bought this, I was under the impression that having auxiliary on both the package and on the back of the unit meant that you could pretty much set this up as a pass-through in case you had limited connections on the back of your app. It would have been a nice idea to have, like, say, your CD line run into the adapter and then run out into the amplifier and then you wouldn't lose a connection. I was gonna pretty much tool this around that idea, where that would have been nice to have and a pretty good feature. However, it doesn't operate that way. Present me now understands why certain things were included in the box the way they were. So, this manual states that essentially you've got power coming into the device, and the device can be connected up uh, either the way stated previously by RCA leads out to an amplifier, but this also says connect the auxiliary to an amplifier. Well, that's kind of bizarre because that's not really what auxiliary is for. In general, my experience with hi-fi systems dictates that auxiliary is actually just supposed to be an extra connection. In the event that you need to plug something into this line, auxiliary, here you go, connect whatever you need. However, the instruction set given with the device says you need to connect the device via auxiliary into your amplifier, which I guess means that this is really just output one and output two. 
So I am kind of disappointed that this will mean that I can't use this as a pass-through to connect, say, my CD player to this, to the amplifier, and, you know, be able to listen to things that way, because it's just nice not to have to sacrifice a connection if you don't need to. But on the other hand, I mean, if it does in fact have two separate Bluetooth outs, that means that, well, essentially you can get Bluetooth out via either the RCA adapter or by a 3.5mm jack, which I guess is why they included a Y cable. It kind of opens up functionality because you can connect it either way. If you have a device that has one connection but not the other, use that. And since a Y cable is what was included, I guess I'm just going to be using that because, well, I don't really want to dig out another RCA cable right now, and it didn't come with one. So, I'll be connecting the Sapphire Enamel adapter up to the Video 1 line on this receiver, largely because that's really the only one that's free right now. Since the manual states that this is one of the two connections possible, I'm going to be using the auxiliary 3.5mm jack since it's actually just another audio out on this device, and connecting it up right back here. So that takes care of the setup as far as the audio connection is concerned, however, the power cord is something else. Now, the power adapter itself is a relatively long cable, about uh, 3 feet. That's if you're using the, um, the, the wall adapter that it came with, though. So, because it's a barrel plug, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time interchanging these out. And I bring this up because if you wind up using the USB cable instead to power the device, which has a USB to barrel adapter on it, well, it's... it's short. I mean, this thing is shorter than a newborn hobbit. It's like one foot. So, yeah, the USB cable, not really practical for use if you're powering the device. However, this is going to make it quite easy for me because I plan on powering it off of my hi-fi system, which has two switched power supplies over here. So, plug that in, and plug this over here. A switched power supply like this is also kind of a benefit for running anything that needs to be plugged in because you can power everything from the hi-fi unit itself. A switched outlet on a hi-fi receiver essentially means just that. When you turn the power on on the receiver, it will turn on the devices that are connected to that outlet. And since the Bluetooth adapter doesn't have a power button on it, well, I don't really have a choice in the matter. And something I'll say is a nice touch for this adapter, I like where the power light is located because it'll cast a nice kind of glow onto the table, rather than just kind of being in your face about lighting. It kind of has a subtle way of letting you know that it's on and running. So, with the sorrowful Nasher adapter in the hi-fi, and everything powered on, now we just have to pair the devices. So, press the button at the top to pair. And it'll start flashing, letting you know it's looking for something. And let's see. How quickly will you find it? Anything? Ah, here we go. Okay, so available devices, e-syncing, Bluetooth adapter. There we go. Pair. Yep. And there we have it. Connected for audio. Alright, I want to give this a fair test and let you hear the results as well. The adapter is currently connected to my hi-fi system, which is in turn connected to my computer over here for recording purposes, so you're going to be able to hear the audio coming from the transmitter, as linked to my phone, as well as the connections from physical media, so I'm going to be playing uh, records, tapes, CDs, uh, a whole bunch of stuff so you can get a kind of a gauge for what the hi-fi itself normally sounds like versus what it's like with the adapter added on. Anyway, let's take a look because I'm really curious at this point. So, I've heard the Bluetooth adapter versus an LP, a cassette, and a CD, and I'm left pretty much just feeling... DISAPPOINTED! 
every single time I use Bluetooth, it falls really under par. Like, there's only a certain portion of the audio range that it's meant to emphasize. The audio itself is overall flat, and there's pretty much only mid-range. I do not hear bass done well, and it just doesn't seem to be reproducing treble properly either. Some of the smaller details in the songs are just missing when I listen over Bluetooth, and that sucks, especially given that this thing is supposed to be connected to a hi-fi system. I listen to music through this thing to bring out the detail in the track, you know, to, to hear the things that I wasn't hearing before because, you know, a car stereo or a Bluetooth speaker just doesn't reproduce a song in its full glory. And I'm just disappointed that all I'm getting out of this dongle is wider sonic mush. <sighs> anyway, while I was stewing about that, I just kind of got to thinking maybe it's the phone because I hadn't actually tried anything else with it yet. And, you know, maybe the phone has uh, too small of a transmitter or an amplifier, so I ran another test, uh, phone versus tablet this time, on the off chance that, you know, a tablet might have a more robust transmitter or amplifier combo tethered to it, and this was the result of that theory. I am still disappointed. It's a little bit better using the tablet, though I think that's really down to what I mentioned before. It's possible that a tablet, having more space inside, has more room for amplification circuitry or a better Bluetooth transmitter, but I'm still hearing the same sonic faults that I heard before. The best way that I have to describe the experience is actually with a set of pictures that I found. The music as I hear it from this Bluetooth adapter feels like this image. There's some life and some clarity, but a lot of the feeling is held back by the swamp. However, from my hi-fi components, I get this. Bright, crisp, clear, vivid, warm, dynamic, and passionate music. I really hope the same thing isn't true of receivers that now have Bluetooth built in, because there is no excuse for those ones to sound like mud. But where this one is concerned, I'd gladly have paid more if I thought it would do anything for the sound quality of this adapter. So it's overall useful, and I am going to keep it in my hi-fi system for quirky stuff like phone calls with friends, or maybe listening to an album that I just don't own yet but it definitely does not replicate the feel of any of the hi-fi components that I have. And honestly, that's a shame because I was really hoping for better out of this thing. I mean, if you know of another one you may want me to try, I mean, perhaps one that's a little bit better in the sonic reproduction department, I, let me know in the comments because I still want better out of this, it's just I haven't found it with this. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, you know what to do.